Hey guys, um, I wanted to do a video uh, on setting up your new subs. Now, <clears throat> you know, the whole point of everything I'm doing is so that you guys end up getting some good subs and enjoying your home theater and music a lot better. And one of the things uh, that is important when you get subs like these is getting the setup right in your, you know, in your AVR primarily. Uh, now, it depends on which manufacturer you go with. Uh, some you have to uh, only turn it up a quarter of the way or, or like the 9 o'clock position, just barely up. Uh, others you turn up about halfway. Uh, these particular uh, SB1000s I've got turned up to a little over halfway. Um, sorry about all the dog walking around. i got a bear in the room kind of wandering around. Um, but anyway... Uh, you know, so you get them get them set up. You plug in the LFE port, which is your RCA cable in the back. Uh, you get that set up. Obviously, power on. I, I would completely uh, disable the uh, the crossover on the back of the sub. Let the AVR do all of that. Um, of course, you know, it's your sub. You know, do do whatever your flavor is. You know what I mean? Um, with these subs, this is not a 7.2 receiver. This is only a 7.1. I have it set up. Uh, in a Y output, so it just splits it, uh, and you know I just run the speaker cable to each one, or the the subwoofer cable to each one. Um, like I said, turn it up to about halfway, or depending on what the manufacturer says, uh, you know. And if you've got something that's uh, got all this variable stuff in it, kind of follow the, the manufacturer instructions. This is kind of a basic. This is a broad that should apply to all subs. Um, and if you're paying attention, you've got two. And when you set them up, you want to set them up one on either side. Don't don't you group them together? You're kind of losing the effect. I mean, it, it'll probably be better than just one by itself. But really, having them separated or non-co-located is kind of the name of the game. Uh, and, and so anyway, you get it set up. You get everything dialed in. You get plug it in. Now you worry about what's going on in your AVR. And I'll I'll zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. Um, all right. So first of all, you go to your speaker setup. And this one you can do Odyssey setup, uh, which you'll want to do. Uh, and, and after you do the Odyssey setup, you want to go through and check everything again. Uh, but in the manual setup, we're going to take a look at speaker configuration. Um, generally, you want to just set them up as small. Even if you got big towers like I've got my running now, uh, you want to send all your, your low frequency to your subs. That's what they're meant to handle. Let them do their job. Okay, so you get everything set up that way. And then you go down to uh, levels and you can do a test tone. The test tone is really good uh, if you've got a, uh, let me show you, uh, I've got an SPL meter on my phone. Uh, if you've got a regular SPL meter, that works too. Get all your, your mains set up at the same tone, okay? Um, and when, then what you can do, your subs, if they're adjusted right, will probably come in at a lower decibel than your mains if it's adjusted right. You're not going to get the same, at least my experience has been that my subs come in a lot lower on this white noise than the main drivers do. So this way you can, you know, this is the way I found out my center channel was running way too hot and really muddied up the system. So you do that test tone, that's a good way to check and make sure all of your mains, your surrounds, are all kind of giving you the same, uh, you know, sound level uh, in, in a general area. And so that helps. Uh, then you go into your distances. Now your, your AVR, if you've got the Odyssey, uh, that'll kind of set itself up, but always check it. Uh, you want to make sure that the distances look kind of right. Now one of the things you'll notice in here is that my subwoofer is rated at a different rate. Okay, now the subs are right next to the mains. So why is my sub set at 14.3 and the fronts are set up at 12? Okay, um, that does something to the way it, it reacts and you kind of adjust that to how it sounds to you. Uh, if you've got a, a, a downward firing sub, it'll be probably a different result on the Odyssey or whatever sub correction you're using uh, than a front firing would. And that's just a matter of stuff bouncing off the walls. But anyway, uh, if you don't have Odyssey, if you just measure with a tape measure from your main listening area, this will do a lot for making your system sound better. So that's the next thing. 
All right, then we go down here to uh, crossovers, but I'm gonna go down to base next. Base management, this is an, an odd one. Um, if you set it to LFE plus main, particularly on the Denon, it's not going to change anything when you set the speakers to small. What this does is when you change it to large, it'll continue to send the same amount of low frequency to the subs while also allowing the mains to get full range. Okay, so it's kind of like a double bass setting. You're getting more bass output. But even with towers like what I'm running now, it's not gobs of bass. So it's not gonna make a huge difference. And when you set these to small, the LFE main doesn't matter. But if you sell it, set it to LFE main to begin with, it's not gonna make any difference when you set it to small, okay? So the next is the crossovers. Now, uh, you know, right now I'm running at 110 hertz, okay? And this depends on my flavor and my mood. Um, a lot of the times I just run this at 90. Uh, one of the benefits of running dual subs is that you can run the crossover higher without getting localization. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, okay, I've got, you know, big towers, they're meant for lower frequencies, I can cross this over lower. You can, um, but you're kind of robbing the sub of, of, its, of its meat and potatoes. That's what it does. Uh, you can set this at, at you know, uh, 50 hertz or, or, or 60 hertz or something like that, but you're taking away when the sub comes in. Okay, so, uh, you know, I say a baseline is 80. You know, that's, that's generally where you want to be. I kind of prefer 90. Um, you know, it's just, that's my flavor. You know what I mean? That's where I like it. It doesn't mean it's right. It doesn't mean that if you want to run yours at 150, it's wrong. You know, go with what sounds good to you. You know what I mean? But, but my recommendation is give the subs as much as they can, as much as you can so they can do their jobs. Okay. Um, and if you want to run, you know, your, your, your mains, uh, your towers, if you want them to get more bass, that's where the LFE plus main uh, setting really comes in. It'll still deliver all the full range content to your towers while at the same time not taking anything away from the subwoofer output. Okay, so that kind of gives you a broad overview on the things you want to set up uh, with your sub. Um, you know, another thing you can do is uh, in the test tone part, which I kind of glossed over, uh, you can turn one sub off and then get a reading for the decibels on your SPL meter, whether it be on your phone or whatever, and get a reading. And then turn that sub off, go over to the other sub, turn the next, turn that one on, and then you want to match that reading. So if it's, you know, you might be surprised, it'll be running a little bit lower than your mains, uh, which is normal. But you, you, you kind of want to match them at, at an even point in, in your room. Your, your main listening point, uh, you want the subs to be kicking out roughly the same uh, white noise level. Uh, so match them. If you've got one sub that's only running, you know, say 55 hertz and another one that's only running 52 hertz, uh, you, you kind of got to even them out. Um, it's not so much about, you know, getting the numbers exactly right as it is, you know, making sure they're all even. You know, you, you can turn it way up to get the particular, you know, decibel rating, but it kind of really doesn't matter. As long as it's all even, that's the important part. And again, your subs aren't going to match the white noise of your uh, of your mains and your surrounds. Um, so anyway, hopefully that helps you guys get it set up right. Um, I, I know uh, a lot of you guys, if you're if you're paying attention to this channel at all, and you're getting these subs in and stuff like that, if you set them up incorrectly, uh, you know when you go through the Odyssey, okay, you'll come back after running Odyssey, and because you have mains. Uh, or, or towers, it'll drop it down to 40 or 60 hertz, okay? And you'd be like, where's the base? Well, Odyssey's deciding that they're going to cut it off and and only deliver, you know, 40 hertz and below. Well, you know, that, that takes away from the sub. So pay attention to that. Uh, I mean, that happened when I first got these subs to listen to. Uh, you know, SVS sent them out and, you know, they're all confident that I'm going to love them. And I ran Odyssey and I'm just like, what? Maybe I made a mistake here. And it was just because Odyssey went ahead and turned it way down. So you want to run these, you know, at least up to 80. Um, you know, I'd say between 80 and 110 is good. Uh, you know, even if you got towers like these, these are, you know, these are big, beautiful towers. 
and they go all the way down to 30 hertz, right? But what they produce at say 40 hertz is nothing like what these subs produce at 40 hertz. Same at 50, same at 60, same at 70. The subs just do a better job of it. And so you let them handle all the heavy lifting. Um, anyway, hopefully that helps you guys get them set up and you get them set up if you got one of the subs uh, that's on the list or something comparable, you're gonna be having a good time. Uh, hopefully this video helped and I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys watching. I'm getting tired, can you tell? <laughs> Thanks man.